Hello everyone, my name is Michael from Polygon Island, and today I'm doing another music visualizer tutorial. Now this tutorial is a very simple, very easy, and the material that I use is so simple it's going to blow your mind. So let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to keep this cube and we're going to hit control and 5 on our keyboard to subdivide it into a sphere. Now, uh, when we do this, Blender does a magical thing, and in our modifiers tab, which is this little wrench icon, it adds a subdivision surface modifier for us. So, once we have this, we can just turn this up one more to the max, which is six, um, six subdivisions, and then we can change the render to the same. And now if we click this little drop down arrow and click apply, that is now applied. So next what we're going to do is we're going to hit S on our keyboard and we're going to hit 3 to scale it up by 3 times and then we're going to hit Control A and then click All Transforms to apply that scale. And once we do that, the next thing we're going to want to do is under Add Modifier uh, with our cube selected, we just go ahead and click Displace. Um, so once we add a Displace modifier, we can click New and that, will go ahead, that goes ahead and adds us a texture. We can rename it or keep it the same. I'm going to keep it the same for this tutorial because it's the only texture we're using. But once we have that, we can go down here to this little checkerboard tab, and this is our texture properties. We can click that, and we see that we have this texture set up, and it's the same texture that we had just made. Um, and we can change the type uh, to clouds. And you, so you can see once we do this, it kind of gives us this thing. Uh, but don't worry, we're going to change this into what we want it to look like here in just a second. Um, but once we have this, what we can do is we can go ahead and go to size, and then just crank this up to something something like that maybe um, and once we have that what we can go ahead and do uh, this is our base shape so um, we're gonna work from here we can right click and click shade smooth to kinda get rid of those uh, faces and edges that we can see um, and once we have the general shape what we can go ahead and do is we can go over here and start making our shaders. So if we go over here to the top left our cursor turns into this little crosshair we can click and drag to split our window and then under this 3D little ball and grid, we can go to Shader Editor. Um, and you can click N to close this window if it's open. Um, N opens and closes it. Um, if you don't have a material already set up, then this will be a new material um, button. You can click that and it will add you in a material. So for the principal BSDF, what we're going to go ahead and do is change the base color all the way down to black. And we're going to change the roughness down to about 0.3 or 0.03. Um, and once we have that, what we can go ahead and do is we're going to add a few nodes. The first node we're going to add is an emission node. So if we hit shift A and then type in emission, uh, this gives us an emission shader node. So the second thing we're going to add is a layer weight node. So if we hit shift A and then type in layer weight, we can add a layer weight node. And then the last thing we're going to add, or not the last thing, the second, uh, next thing we're going to add, shift A, and we're going to add a mix shader. Um, and so while we're here, um, we're going to do this in a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and add these nodes in now. We can hit Shift A, and then we can add a Noise Texture node. And then we can hit Shift A, we can add a Color Ramp node. And then we can hit Shift A and add a Brightness and Contrast node. So once we have all of our nodes uh, set up here, ready for use, we can go ahead and drag and drop this Mix Shader in between the Principal BSDF and the Mix Shader in our uh, thing here. Um, we can go ahead and connect the emission up to that in the bottom, um, and I'm going to put a strength of about 5 on this. So now is a good time to switch our render engine over to Cycles, so by do to do that, we're going to go over here to our little uh, render properties, and then under Render Engine, just switch it to Cycles. Under Device, switch it to GPU Compute, if you have your GPU that's more powerful than your CPU. If not, leave it on CPU. So uh, once we have this, if we go ahead and go to our world tab, uh, which is down here, it's this little globe icon over on the right, and then just change the color to black. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this light, and then if we go into rendered view, we can see what we have here, which is just emission. So um, that was loud. Um, so uh, the reason this is just emitting light right now is we have a completely black principal BSDF and a completely white emission shader all connected together. Um, and the magic happens when we take this layer weight node. So if we take this layer weight node and we take the Fresnel value, which is basically it, it's something with the curvature and the edges of an object, and I, I don't I don't know, it looks cool, edges, curvature, uh, but yeah, um, so if we take this Fresnel and then we take it and put it into the fact of our mix shader, we can see something happens, and uh, we can see we can uh, start to get that uh, detail back, it's not just a silhouette of just glow anymore. 
Um, and if we start messing around with this blend value, we can see that um, it starts blending more and more. And we can see toward the middle of our object, it's more black, and toward the outside edges, it's, it's more of this white glow color. So um, for this, I'm going to set the blend to 0.05. Um, for now, uh, we can adjust that later if we need to, but we can see already we're kind of getting that look that we're going for. Um, but there's a few more things that I want to do. So the first thing is I'm going to take this noise texture and I'm going to take this color ramp. I'm going to take this noise texture and I'm going to take the color of the noise texture and put it into the factor of the color ramp. And I'm going to take the color from the color ramp and put it into the alpha of our principal shader. So you can see once we do that, it basically makes the entire thing see-through. It kind of uh, just... We can still see it, um, but it's 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 weird, um, you know. Uh, like we can see the edges and things that are defined, but we can see completely through it. So we don't want to be able to see completely through the entire object. We want to have some parts that are more opaque and some parts that are more transparent. And the way we do that is by using this noise texture. So this noise texture right here, um, basically, is just a black and white noise texture. And the thing we can do with that is we can do procedural things with it. So we can tell Blender to take this noise texture, map it onto this object, and make some parts of it more opaque and more transparent with this color ramp and connect it to this alpha. So if we go ahead and take this color ramp and we zoom in real close on our object and we start crushing these together, we should see that we start getting these more opaque spots. Um, so we start getting spots like these and stuff that we can't see through, but we have these other spots that we can. So, um, if we do something like this, where we have something like this, for example, where we have spots all over it, and we can go to our noise texture and we can start changing that. So we can change the detail to about 15. We can change the scale if we want it to be a little bit bigger, maybe something like that. Um, we can add some distortion to it, um, change the roughness, and then we start getting something like this. Um, and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take this brightness and contrast node and just drop it right in the middle of the color ramp and principled. And then we can change the brightness to maybe po negative 0.3 and the contrast to like 0.5. And we start getting a more defined effect on that. So, um, so yeah, um, if we start just changing the brightness down low we start getting an effect that brightens this Fresnel effect on the edge right here but does not just blow up a bunch of light inside of our object so it, uh, it really gives it a pretty good look honestly um, but once we have that that is basically the shader itself done um, we can change the color of it I'm gonna change it to something like a blue maybe something like this I can change the emission strength to something like seven maybe maybe bring this back down to something like that um, we can change this little blend factor over here if we want a little bit less intense um, stuff kinda coming through the middle um, I'm setting that to point zero three um, and once we have that um, that's pretty much our shader and object done now all we have left to do is actually just map the music to it which is insanely simple if I showed you how to do this and you had no experience with blender you'd be mind blown I'm, I'm telling you but uh, what we need to do is we, get, we need to go down here to our uh, timeline and we can click this little clock icon and then we can go to graph editor um, and once we're in the graph editor we can kinda of pull this up a little bit to give us a little bit more uh, view in what we're doing but what we're going to do now is we're basically gonna tell blender hey we want the strength of this displacement that we added earlier to change. So if we can see if we move the displacement around in the strength, we can see that we start getting the effect of that music visualizer. So um, if we start on frame one and then we change uh, and we go ahead and right click the strength of this um, displace modifier and click insert keyframe, we can see it adds a bunch of stuff over here. It also adds a keyframe onto frame one uh, for this object. So now what we need to do is we need to tell Blender, hey, uh, take this certain audio file, take the data from it, and animate that onto this object. And I'm not sure quite how it does it um, technically, but it, it does. Uh, so here's how you do it. 
if we go to this little key tab right here, and then we go to bass sound to F curves, and then we find whatever sound we have, I just have this no copyright EDM track, um, and then we hit play, which is the space bar, we can see that we start seeing some stuff. So we start being able to see this thing react with the music, and it's, it's already looking really, really good. Uh, I'll show you how to adjust it a little bit more to your liking if you need to here in a second But the part the problem that we're facing right now is if you haven't noticed when we play it We can't hear the audio playing back right now um, The way to fix that is we need to just tell blender There's an audio file to be playing so easiest way to do that is just clicking back on this little tab to change whatever viewport we're in go to video sequencer add sound and then just the exact same sound that you used before and so now if we go back to graph editor and we click play we can see that it is now playing and moving and animating and doing all that pretty well um, but the thing is, right now, um, our animation space, this little light gray space compared to the dark gray space, is nowhere near long enough. Um, and it will end very prematurely, um, depending on how long your song is. So we have to set the uh, end of our animation to be when your song ends. So the, way, the easiest way to do that, um, instead of trying to uh, manually count out the seconds and divide them and trying to find out how many frames that is, um, which nobody in their right mind would do. You would hit Google way before that. But easiest way to do that is to just scroll out on the graph editor, and we'll eventually see there is this little X, and you can see there's also one at the very start. It marks the start and end of your audio track. Uh, so if we find this X and we find exactly where it is pretty much, and then we just go to it, we can see what frame um, our music ends on. So, 4,651, I would say. Um, once we have that number, we can go back to our um, timeline and then just set that number. So it was 4,651 frames. I set that. And now if we go back to our graph editor, we should see that, yes, um, our animation does stop when that stops. But if we were to play our animation at any point during this, we should see that it is, re it is reacting perfectly with the music. And it is. Um, so that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, a few things that I do want to show you how to do just in case you do want to uh, or do need to do them. Um, first, um, an issue that can come up is if your... Um, visualizer is not strong enough if it is just staying as a circle or if it is just or if you want a more intense visualizer the way to do that is by going to modifiers add a modifier add a noise modifier and change the blend type to add and then you can see it instantly this starts already doing some stuff um, and if we go through it we can see that it's a little bit more intense than before um, and then we can mess with that even more by changing the strength of it so you can see the strength of it kind of gives you that more intense effect um, but we're gonna leave it alone for now because I feel like this little circle is pretty good um, and now if you would want to uh, render this out um, the settings that I would recommend um, you obviously can add a full background and full scene to this if you'd want to but if you were trying to take this music visualizer and put it over another background or some kind of music or anything and you want the, if you just want the background to be transparent uh, what we can do is go into the render tabs, or in the render tab, and go down to film, and then just click transparent. And we can see that gives it uh, this transparent kind of thing going on right here. So um, if you notice that you can see too much through this and you don't like it, uh, what we can do is we can just adjust some of this stuff in the shader. Um, and then we can change maybe some of this. Brightness and contrast. Change some of the scale. Till we have something like this going on right here. And then you can just kind of tinker with this shader um, to kind of get the look that you want. Um, let's say this is pretty good. Um, and you can animate 
literally anything here by the way um, if you want to animate a random value um, you can just right click insert keyframe um, you can even bake the same sound to it um, but for now I would say this is all right and it's a pretty good looking visualizer we can see we still got some, some kind of some of that whoops kind of some of that uh, stuff we can kind of still see through um, but it's not too bad um, on the eyes if it's transparent but yeah uh, that's pretty much it um, if you guys enjoyed the tutorial if you guys got something out of it or learned something hit the like button and subscribe that really helps my channel out uh, my name is Michael from Polygon Island and I'll see you guys next time bye